exercise 8-19. We're going to complete a bank reconciliation, and then we're going to journalize the transactions that the company was not aware of until they got their bank statement. So Henderson Photography's checkbook lists the following. So this checkbook is a representation of the company's cash account. Of course, a cash account is basically their checking account. And we've got checks, so these are decreases, and we've got deposits, so these are increases, and then the balance. Over here, Henderson's November bank statement shows up. So here's our bank statement. Bank statement shows some checks, so these are deductions and some other deductions, and it shows one deposit, $130. Now check this out. How much does the bank statement over here say we have at the end of the month? It says we have $400. How much does our checkbook say we have at the end of the month? Well, here's our balance column. The end of the month is November 30th, 1345. So which number is right, 1345 or 400? Chances are neither number is right because there's things that both sides were not aware of. So the job of the bank reconciliation, of course, is to compare the monthly bank statement over here on the right to our company's cash account over here on the left to see if we are missing any transactions. The most commonly missing transactions are interest revenue, bank service charge, NSF checks, non-sufficient funds, because we're not aware of these until we get the bank statement. We're also gonna look for errors in our accounting records and errors in the bank statement. And then if we are missing any transactions, we're gonna enter them in the journal. And if we made any errors, we need to correct them in the journal. So what we're gonna do is go through here one by one and check them off. Now I can't write on these screens, so I've made these copies and on these copies I can write on them. So this is the bank statement which I got from clicking here and this is the checkbook which I got from clicking here. So what we're going to do now is just go down here one by one and for instance this check and we're going to check to see if this check number 622 for 10 bucks is also on the bank statement. If it is we're going to check it off with an arrow. I can only do arrows and I can only do rectangles. So if you forget what the arrow means, it says the arrow means data appears on both a bank statement and in the cash account. A rectangle means the other side is missing this data. So let's say, let's say I put a rectangle around this printed checks charge. What the rectangle means is that, and here's an example of a rectangle, in case you didn't know what a rectangle was. Anyway. Um, this would mean that the other side, the checkbook, was not aware of this printed check charge. So let's get rid of that because we got to go through here one at a time. So I'm going to start on the book side. The book means our accounting records, which is the checkbook. And I'm going to go through here, through here one at a time. So check number 622. We have to look to see if check 622 is over here and make sure it's for $10. It is. So I'm going to check it off. Remember. The way I check things off is the arrow means the data appears on both the bank statement and the cash account. So I'm going to check it off over here. Oops. So that appears on both sides. Next, I'm going to go back to the checkbook. And now we've got a deposit of $130. So look over here. Do we have a deposit of $130? Yes, we do. So I'm going to check that off with my arrow method. Moving down, we've got check 623 for 35 bucks. It's over here, so check it off on both sides. Utilities, check 624 for 75 bucks. Check 624. Uh-oh, this is 115. So don't just assume that because we have check 624 that both sides enter it correctly. So in the real world, we would have to go and do some troubleshooting. Who is correct? Our records where we put 75 bucks in our accounting records or the bank's records where they said it's $115 and they took out $115 from our cash account, our checking account. So we look, follow the asterisk. Once we've done some research, this is what we found. 
this $115 is the correct amount for check number 624. So this check 624 is correct. And this check 624 for 75 bucks is incorrect. So what has happened is, is we actually wrote the check for $115, but we entered it into our checking account with the incorrect number, 75 bucks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a rectangle. Now remember the rectangle means the other side is missing the data. So this is the correct side. So that means this checkbook is wrong for check number 75. And I will show you how we fix that later. So moving down, we've got check 625 for 60 bucks, check 625 for 60 bucks. So we can check that off on both sides because that is correct. Then we got check 626 for 85 bucks. Do we have check 626? No, we don't. So we're going to put a rectangle around this. Remember, the rectangle means the other side is missing this data. So what has happened is towards the end of the month, on November 26, we wrote a check number 626 for 85 bucks. And whoever we wrote it to did not cash it in time for it to appear on here. So that's why it's missing from the bank statement. So next we're going to go down to Check 627 for $270. I do not see check 627 for 270. So this is another thing that's missing from the bank statement. And again, why is it missing from the bank statement? Because we wrote it at, towards the end of the month. And this we wrote it to Upstate Realty. And they have not cashed it in time for it to appear here. Okay. And then last thing, so these two checks, 626 and 627, are called outstanding checks. So if you forgot what an outstanding check is, pause the video and you can refresh your memory with this paragraph. And then our last one is we've got Service revenue looks like as a deposit for twelve twenty five. So in our records, we got some revenue. We recorded it as cash going up. That's what a deposit means. And do we have a twelve twenty five deposit over here? So here's a deposit section. The only deposit is we got a hundred thirty dollar deposit from earlier. So let's go back here. We're going to put a rectangle around this. So what this means is that the other side, the bank statement was not aware of this. So why did this 1225 deposit appear on our checkbook, in our accounting records in other words, but not on the bank statement? Well, look when it was done. Uh, so on November 30th, about the time when these people were probably going to print the checks, we deposited 1225. We entered it in our cashing account, our checking account, in other words, our cash account in our accounting records. But when the bank printed out the bank statement, they printed out the bank statement before the 1225 deposit appeared. So that's why it's not yet going to be up on the bank statement. So this is called a deposit in transit. And if you forgot what that means, here's my definition and explanation. You can pause the video if you want to see it again and review it. Okay. So we've gone through the checkbook side one by one. So let's go to the bank statement and make sure everything is checked off. We don't check off the balances. We're only checking off the transactions. So this transaction is checked off, that one, that one, that one, that one. So now we've got this printed check charge. So do we have a $30 check charge over here? No, because we did not know about it. So we need to put a rectangle around it, meaning that the other side, our checkbook side, was not aware of that printed check charge. And then we've got a service charge of five bucks. This five dollar service charge does not know uh, does not appear in our checkbook because we did not know about it until we got the bank statement. So this is another thing that the bank 
or excuse me, the cash account was not aware of. So we will later have to enter that into our accounting records. So now we're done checking off all the transactions. So every transaction is either checked off with meaning with an arrow or it's got a rectangle meaning, meaning it has to go on the bank reconciliation because one side or the other is missing it. So let's go to the problem now and notice in this bank reconciliation, they're only showing us the bank side. So that means we can only enter the transactions that the bank was not aware of. So let's go back to our two windows. So the bank was not aware of which set of transactions. Let's look over here. Some of you may say, well, the bank was not aware of the printed checks and the service charge. No, that's not right. This is the bank statement. They have this information on the bank statement. So the data that the bank was unaware of are things like these two checks that were written towards the end of the month and haven't been cashed yet and the service revenue deposit. So these three rectangles are things we're going to have to enter on the bank side. But before we enter the transactions on the bank side, we have to enter the balance. So what we're going to do is we have to write, we have to find the bank balance as of November 30th. So let me get back to the bank statement. So here's the bank statement. According to the bank statement, what is the balance of the cash account, our checking account, at the end of the month? But don't grab this 525 because that's at the beginning of the month. So according to the bank statement, the balance at the end of the month was 400. So now I'm going to bring in the checkbook side. So remember these three transactions are in the squares, rectangles means that the other side is missing the data. In other words, the bank side did not know about these two checks written, did not know about this deposit that was made late in the month. So we have to enter these transactions on the bank side. So let's just take these one at a time from top to bottom. Check 626. So the bank did not know that we wrote check 626 for 85. So do we add that or subtract that? Well, it's a check we're writing, so that's a subtraction. And these are called outstanding checks. So let's bring that window back here. So that check was for, uh, it's check number 626 for $85. Check 626 for 85 and the other check was 627 for 270. Check 627 for 270. And then the last thing that the bank side was not aware of is this service revenue deposit. Notice this 1225 is a deposit. So deposits make our money, our cash balance go up. So we're going to put that in the add section. So we're going to say it is a deposit in transit of $12.25. Again, don't forget to review the definition of outstanding check and deposit in transit if you forgot those definitions. Now we just need to do the math. So we got $400, we're gonna add 1225, so we got 1625. Then we're gonna add these two checks, 85 plus 270 gives us 355. Now these are, remember these are checks, it's less. So we need to subtract 355 from 1625 gives us, what is that? 1270. So this is the adjusted bank balance. Notice this is the bank side we're working on. So don't choose book balance. It's the bank balance. So what this means is as long as this balance agrees when we do the book side, the amount of cash we actually have is 1270. Remember the 
bank statement said we have $400. Well, it turns out that's wrong. Why was that wrong? Because they did, the bank did not know about these two checks we wrote and then this big deposit. So the main difference is that big deposit. So let's check our answer. Now we're going to go to the book side. So on the book side, we're going to enter things that the book side, in other words, our accounting records, did not or was not aware of. First of all, we need to find the balance. So the checkbook means our, the book side means our uh, accounting records. So what's the balance of cash at the end of the month? 1345. So we enter the balance here, 1345. And that is the balance as of the end of the month. And I grabbed the wrong window. Let's go to the bank statement. So on the banks, so in the book side, we have to enter transactions that the book, in other words, the company was not aware of. Well, the company was not aware of the printed check charge, was not aware of the service charge, and was not aware of this error that we made. So let's just go from the top to the bottom and figure out where they go. So to review this check 624, what happened is this check 624, which is for utilities, we wrote it for 75 bucks and, excuse me, we entered it as 75 bucks, but the bank subtracted 115. So we went and did some research to see which is accurate. We went and looked up the image, and it turns out that it really was for 115. How do we know that? Because of this asterisk. This is the correct amount for check 624. So this amount is correct, but in our accounting records, we entered it for 75. So we have to correct that now. We've already subtracted 75. So now what some students will say, well, we need to subtract 115. No, we've already subtracted 75. We have to subtract more so that the total subtraction for 624 is 115. So 115 minus 75 is 40. So we have to put in 40. And the reason I'm putting it under the less side is this was a check. So we have to subtract $40 more to go from the 75 we wrote it to to have a total subtraction of 115. And so the explanation of that is correction of book error. Remember, we made the error on our books, so that's why we're correcting it on the book side. It's not a bank error. So we've entered this rectangle. Let's go to the next rectangle. So we got a $30 charge, so it means we're going to have to put it under the less section. And it's for checks. So thirty dollars. See cost of printed checks. And then the last thing we need to enter is a five dollar service charge from the bank. And now some of you may be saying, well, wait, don't we have to add something? Well, not if we don't have anything to add. So this was a subtraction, this was a subtraction, this was a subtraction. So we're going to leave the add portion blank. An example of something we would add is if the bank collected from one of our customers and we did not know about it until the bank statement showed up. So we can bring down a subtitle of 1345. And then we have to add up these. So we got a total of $75. So $13.45 so minus $75 gives us $12.70, which needs to be the same as this. So if this number, $12.70, does not match this number, $12.70, then you've done either your math wrong or you missed a transaction. So this is the adjusted book balance. So now what this means is that we actually have in our cash account $1,270, but our accounting record says $1,345. So what we're going to have to do is go over here or go down to our journal and enter these three transactions that we did not know about. 
so that our cash account will go from 1345 to the proper 1270. How much cash does Henderson actually have? Well, we just discussed that, 1270. All right, so to review our simple explanation of a bank reconciliation, you're gonna find the differences, and then if you are missing transactions, enter them into your journal. If you made any errors, correct them in the journal. So we've put them, we've put these uh, transactions in the bank reconciliation, but remember this bank reconciliation is not our official accounting records. That's the journal. So we now have to go down to our journal, which is what this is, and we have to enter the transactions that the company did not know. So the transactions that the company did not know about were the ones on the book side, things like the correction of the book error, cost of the printed checks, and the service charge. And it says begin with the entry to correct the error. So this correction of book error is $40. So just to refresh your memory, check 624 was $415. This is correct, but we entered it as only 75 in our books. So we subtracted 75 already, so we have to subtract a $40 more to get the total subtraction to be 115 and what was it for? Utilities, according to this right here. So we need to subtract 40 more from cash. So is cash going to be the debit or credit? Remember, to subtract from cash, which is an asset, it has to be the credit. So the credit is cash. And the other one is, well, what did we spend that money on? According to this, it's utilities expense. And this is, we're correcting a book error. To record error on check number 624. Next, journalize a printed check charge. So up here, the check charge was $30. And notice it's making our, our cash balance go down. So we have to subtract from cash. 30, 30. Cash is going down, so that's the credit. And let's see in our chart of accounts what we've got here. So there is no check charge account. So we're going to have to go with bank expense. Record printed check charge incurred. And then finally, we're going to journalize the service charge. So that service charge is for five bucks right here. So we have to enter a five for the debit, five for the credit. Cash is going down since we're being charged. So cash is the credit. And the closest thing we've got here is bank expense. To record bank service charges incurred. So that's it. So remember what we found out is that our actual cash balance is 1270, not the 1345 that the that our cash account showed and not the $400 that the bank statement showed. And the reason there's a difference is because there's transactions that both sides did not know about, which is usually the case. So that's it for this problem.